the periodic table, I kind of tried to do like a representation up here. The first one, if everybody remembers like from like General Bio and stuff, this one, hydrogen, kind of off up here to itself, you know, sort of like, okay, well, why did they move it up there? Well, because it is up there all by itself. Number one on the periodic table. When you begin to look at metals, we see stuff like lithium. We see stuff like sodium, potassium, magnesium. Over here, we get stuff like iron. Um, some of those other transition metals I can't think of right off the top of my head right now. All right. Over here, on these non-metals, we have stuff like oxygen, chlorine, bromine, that sort of thing. Now, these are going to be my elements. Periodic table tells me certain information about every element. The smallest particle that has the chemical characteristics of it are going to be the atoms. Which are what? Do you happen to remember protons, neutrons, and electrons? Yay! Protons and neutrons will be found in the nucleus of an atom. I should say of an element. Every element is going to have a nucleus and it is going to contain the number of protons and neutrons that the information from the periodic table tells us. Electrons are the atoms flying around the nucleus. They're in these clouds. So if I think about an element and in that nucleus, I'm going to have protons, neutrons flying around in clouds are going to be my electrons. Do you happen to remember in these clouds, in these levels around the nucleus, how many electrons can exist at each level? Okay. Two, eight, 18, up to the 37, which would be in the fourth one, which is about as high as we're going to go for human purposes. I'm going to change your terminology just a little bit. Rather than us saying 2, 8, 18, let's now put up 2 in front of those numbers. Because the first level, this first cloud, okay, it can hold up, <clears throat> up to 2 electrons. The second one can hold up to 8. The next one can hold up to 18, all right, which is pretty, you, we might go to the fourth level sometimes, but for the most part, for, for human purposes, this is about as far as we go. Now, the reason that I say up to that number of electrons, there's only one column on the periodic table where the outer shell Okay, that outer cloud, that outer level, is full of the electrons where they're supposed to be. And that's going to be my noble gases. 
radon, helium, all of my noble gases, their outer electrons are full. This is why they do not react. The amount of energy needed to make them react, we can't generate. Well, we probably could, but it would just be tremendous. Everything else, everything else on this periodic table does not have a full outer shell. Therefore, they are reactive. So, the electrons, ooh, let's think about that for a second. The electrons determine how active that element will be. Mm, wait a minute. What? What process did I just ask you guys to think about that generates energy? The grid. Cellular respiration. Cellular respiration. <coughs> generates those 36 to 38 ATPs. How? What part? Uh, exchange of uh, hydrogen. What is it called when it does that? When it's exchange when that exchange is taking place, it's bumping down the blank transport chain. The electron transport chain. What did I just ask you guys to do? I asked y'all to think outside the box, and I asked y'all to make a connection. Because you're sitting there, and you're thinking, know about protons, neutrons, and electrons. Is this really going to help me when I go to hand out a prescription? Why do I have to know this? Uh, it with the cells in the body because certain cells have different electrons. All certain chemicals react to the cells differently because of electrons. Well, let's just keep electrons as being part of the metabolic activity. Okay. Okay? Everything you do is going to come down to it being at the cellular level. Everything. You need to... After chapter four, this class is a piece of cake. I know, y'all are thinking, dude, what? That's not what I've heard. <laughs> I've heard it's like the hardest class on the universe. Of course it is, but it's the most fun. <laughs> if you can grasp the concepts that I'm trying to stress very much <laughs> right now in chapters one through four, you are going to have this class licked. This is why I need you guys to know this stuff. So, ask me questions if I move too fast, okay? Let me know, because this is the most important part, all right? Now, so, I just now asked you to make a connection between this, not the lowest, this simplest, level of our being to something for our being as a whole, all right? And this is, th these are the things that I want you to begin to start putting together and try to remember them as we move forward in topics because we will be coming back to this. 
So, if I've got protons, neutrons, electrons, it's going to be these electrons that are going to help determine how active something is going to be. Now, in the case that we just mentioned, the cellular respiration, cellular respiration is very important in our bodies because it generates ATP. Body does not store ATP. ATP production quits. You're going to die. That's just point blank. Okay? So, in the structure of these elements, having those electrons on the outer shells be active is going to determine how they react with another element. And when we have them react with another element, things begin to form and happen. The information that the periodic table gives us becomes important because that information will let us know how active something is going to be, things that it could react with. For example, we as humans are organic. What element of the periodic table do you associate with organic? Carbon. 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 On the periodic table, it's number six. It's atomic mass, 12. What does each number tell me? Number six on the periodic table. How many electrons in what? Uh, well, the atomic mass would be the protons and electrons. Protons and neutrons. My atomic number tells me my protons and electrons. The particle that I'm missing, neutrons. I got to do a little bit of math to know how many neutrons are in the nucleus. I simply subtract the number from the weight. So by doing that, it tells me <coughs> I have six neutrons. So my atomic mass, my atomic number, it's giving me information that's going to help me determine the structure of that element and how it's going to react. Hydrogen is number one on the periodic table. And it has a mass of one. Kind of weird. That's why it's kind of stuck up there, hanging off of the periodic table. Oxygen is number 16. Number eight with a sixth weight of 16 on the periodic table. Now, if I take information that's given to me by all of the elements at any point in time, I can determine what their structure is. And I can determine ways that they do or could react. So, if I take carbon, for example, and I'm going to do the structure of carbon. All right, in my nucleus, protons and neutrons are found in my nucleus. 
So this is telling me I have six protons and I've got six neutrons. So six protons, six neutrons. It's also telling me I have six electrons. In that first shell, it can hold up to two. I have two that can go in that first shell. So, electron, electron. This tells me I've got how many electrons left over? I've got four. Now, in that second shell, I'm going to have my four electrons. How many does that outer shell want? Eight. Eight. The octet rule, if a shell has at least eight, and it doesn't matter how big shells we go to, okay, that outer shell has eight, it will be happy. This atom right now, this uh, element, is not happy. It's going, wait a minute, four? Uh-uh, i got to have four more. Okay, I, got, I need four more electrons. Now, hmm, let me think here for a second. We're considered organic, carbon-based, all right? Anybody ever taken any kind of organic chemistry? Okay. One of the things that a carbon atom will like to attach to readily is hydrogen. Because hydrogen's flying around out there unhappy because it's only got one electron in that outer shell and it wants two, okay? Now, hydrogens will connect together so that they'll be, um, you know, they'll be happy, but put carbon in the mix and they'll readily attach to hydrogens. They'll take, they'll go, oh yeah, come here, hydrogen. Come here. Come here. Come here. And now I got eight. I got CH4, methane. Very simple gas. Not really simple, but on the scale of things, simple gas. All right. But is this now this? is the basis of organic as we think of it for us. But does carbon exist as only carbon-12? No. How else does it exist? I got carbon-13, carbon-14. How have I heard of those? Carbon dating. So now, wait a minute. Huh. 